Welcome to another episode of Mop 13 Garage. Today we're going to talk about why we're putting the 4R70W in our classic Bronco. So today we are going to be talking about the 4R70W transmission and we're going to be doing this more anecdotally uh, for those of you who aren't going to be putting a 4R70W in your truck um, and talk about kind of the process that we went through and why we're using this transmission. Uh, and then next we're going to be doing a full in-depth step-by-step rebuild of a 4R70W uh, with the adaption to a Dana 20. And then also what we found when we rebuilt this, that is what it looks like right there. We already have a problem. There's metal shards in here on the magnet. Yeah, there's, it's full of metal. But if you look at that, you can see where this inner bushing has basically disintegrated right there. And that's where the metal is coming from. Yeah, that one is, uh, that one is burned as well. So, so far every clutch pack that we've had has been burned. The clutches actually don't look that bad. You can see the burn on that side, but not on that side. It's a tan and black. So that's what we got here. This one's missing chunks out of it all the way around it. So it looks like maybe this transmission was just run out of fluid. Look at all that, all the friction material gone off of that. And the rest of it uh, still had a little bit of padding in it. So obviously these are all burned up this transmission is like most of the 4 70w transmissions that came before 1998 this one's a 1997 uh the uh several of the clutch packs were burned up uh we had to replace the steels and the friction plates because they were uh for the most part disintegrated and it had to do with a couple of different issues that the 4 70w has first of all it has an overheating problem so if you don't have a very large uh, transmission cooler or more than one transmission cooler the transmission fluid breaks down quickly and causes additional overheating which will then uh, disintegrate the clutch pack the number two is that for 1998 the uh, servo pistons the rubber seals that went around those would disintegrate causing a loss in pressure obviously and a loss in pressure would mean a loss in fluid and a loss in fluid will then again cause it to disintegrate and then the third was the overdrive piston had a tendency because it's an aluminum case and the, and the piston uh, is a steel piston, a steel shaft piston, uh, that the case would actually wallow out to a larger diameter, creating a loss in pressure as well. Now, when we rebuilt this, we actually put in a fix for that, which essentially are uh, O-rings that go into a new servo pin to help keep the pressures in the case higher, uh, therefore uh, eliminating the opportunity that we're going to lose pressure to the clutch backs. And then obviously when we rebuilt this, we switched out the tail shaft in it before we reassembled it. But now our 470W is completely rebuilt and ready to be mated to the Dana 20. Part of the reason why we wanted to purchase this Bronco is because it already came with a 1997 Explorer powertrain. And at that point we knew also that we wanted to try to keep the Ford factory uh, fuel injection and transmission control together so that it would drive similar to a new vehicle without a lot of problems even though there you have to modify that still two and a half hours and we only got the upper intake off so we're just gonna keep going I don't even know look down in here I don't even know where to stop so I'm just gonna keep pulling stuff until I can't pull anything anymore now adapting this transmission to an early Bronco does uh, have quite a few modifications that you have to do to it. So first of all, the transmission is overall longer than either the three-speed manual or the C4 transmission that came stock in the early Broncos uh, by several inches. And so in doing that, you have to actually move the transmission support back on the frame several inches in order to accommodate, which then creates an issue with the rear and the front drive shaft the rear drive shaft is going to have to be shortened and the front drive shaft is going to have to be lengthened in order for it to fit correctly. And then it also creates a little bit of a possibility of binding in that rear drive shaft because it creates more angle in that rear drive shaft. And often there are true transfer cases that are the most popular options for adapting a Ford Bronco. Uh, one of those is the stock Dana 20 that came with it and the other one is the NP205, uh, which is uh, somewhat more modern um, somewhat larger transfer case. The MP205 will actually made up to this with a little bit of modification uh, to the case uh, for the shift rails, 
uh, but the Dana 20, if you're going to go with the stock Dana 20, it requires a an adapter that goes onto the back. Uh, this one came from its advanced adapters. It also requires the new tail shaft. So the transmission has to be completely rebuilt, um, or I should say completely disassembled if you're going to go to a Dana 20 because of the new tail shaft that has to go in, which is literally the last piece that comes out of the transmission when you pull the entire transmission out. So at that point, it's better to just rebuild the transmission and put it all back together, which is what we did. And the adapter kit also comes with the adapter kit that goes into the Dana 20. So now this is mated uh, correctly together so that we can put that behind our uh, five liter Explorer motor and we're off and running. And then you're also gonna need something to shift this for our 70W because it is an electronic transmission. It'll need a powertrain control module in order to shift it. And you can do that aftermarket. There are several aftermarket ones out there that you can use along with an aftermarket fuel injection if that's the way you wanna go. Or if you wanted to do that with a carbureted motor, you could do that as well. Uh, we pulled the uh, harness from a 1997 Ford Explorer to kind of go along with this transmission. We are going to run a 1997 Explorer 5 liter motor uh, that we've stroked out to 347 uh, cubic inches to this 4R70W and we're going to drive the whole thing or we're going to attempt to drive the whole thing with the stock computer, the stock fuel injection and the stock PCM transmission controller. Another issue with the transmission, if you're going to be pulling a 4R70W out of an Explorer, let's say, is that in 98 they switched this uh, connection here. Uh, the new connection from 90, the connection from 98 on will actually fit. It'll connect, uh, but the pins are different, and so it won't shift. Make sure that you either get a 97 and back controller for a 97 and back um, 4R70W or a 98 for a 98. So that the, that's kind of the breaking point there between the two. And that's a wrap on another episode of My Point 3 Garage. If you found it informative, please hit that like button. It helps people locate us in that vast YouTube universe. And then also subscribe because we have the, the rebuild of the Dana 20, the adaption of these two things. And hang out with us while we finish building these Broncos.